Have you ever read any Terrence McKenna? I know you're familiar with something called the stoned ape theory. No. Sorry, not. McKenna, it was a, he was a, an ethnobotanist, and he was also a psychedelic adventurer, and he had a theory. And the theory was that the, what you're talking about, this ch climate change, uh, that also coincided with the doubling of the human brain size, his theory was that one of the things that was in play was that these apes would experiment with different food sources as they moved into the grasslands. And there was a lot of undulates in mm -hmm. these grasslands. And that psilocybin mushrooms, which we know existed back then, would grow in these grasslands. And that these monkeys, these apes rather, started consuming psilocybin mushrooms and it led them to be more creative. And it also led to specific traits like the development of language that eating mushrooms um, in low doses increases visual acuity, which would lead them to be better hunters or more perceptive. It also leads them to be hornier, which would uh, most likely involve more breeding, more sexual activity, and possibly select the, the ones that chose the, the mushrooms would maybe possibly breed more than the ones that didn't choose the mushrooms because they were more into it, they were more social, more uh, sexually active. And he has a, a series of, uh, like, the, his brother Dennis, who's still alive, detailed it on a podcast we did, the very first podcast we did. In, his brother is, a, is, a, is an actual scientist and detailed it in terms of how psilocybin affects the brain and what areas of the brain it, it, what, what, what actually takes place when you're under the influence of this and that it could very potentially have led to the development of language and that this, all these things in play, the throwing arm, the uh, you know, developing these new social networks uh, where you, you need to communicate with each other along with the harnessing of fire along with the consumption right. of psychedelic mushrooms right. on a regular basis because they were incredibly frequent and very edible. All right, that's total trip. I've never heard of that Fascinating. before. Fascinating. Yeah, it would be really, like, that's a really good example of some random thing. If it really did play that role, how random that is that these freaking things happen to be growing there and that they happen to be attracted mm -hmm. to them and ate them. We know that animals like to get high. Um, yes. Elephants will eat these fruit that have, well, the drunk in this case, that have yeah. over-ripened and have um, become alcoholic. We know that animals will do that. You've seen jaguars that consume psychedelic plants and they no. lie on their back and stare at the sky. You've never seen that? <laughs> no. Oh, it's amazing. Well, you, do you know what ayahuasca is? No. Ayahuasca is a, it's a way that uh, these people in the rainforest developed untold thousands of years ago of developing an orally active version of dimethyltryptamine. Do you know what dimethyltryptamine no, is? No, I'm not no. in this. Okay. Yeah. Dimethyltryptamine is the most potent psychedelic known to man. It's an incredibly potent drug that is just in intensely hallucinatory, gives you these insane visions, and it also is pretty, this, here's, here's a jaguar. It's really crazy. And this is in the Amazon. These jaguars eat these plants, and these plants uh, are, they, they have the ingredients of ayahuasca, and these jaguars are known to eat these things and then trip their fucking balls off. Yeah. They eat them, and their pupils dilate, and they roll over on their back and stare at the sky. I mean, they're clearly high. Right. So this is something that oh, you're going to say. Something. Yeah, this is what I'm going to say. So this is what, what ayahuasca is, is dimethyltryptamine. Like, look, it's kind of cool yeah. watching this jaguar f trip balls. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they just stare. They see shit that's not there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, or it is there. Maybe they're astral this. traveling. It's amazing. So what ayahuasca is, is w there's dimethyltryptamine, which is this incredibly potent psychedelic drug, is produced in the human body. It's produced by the liver. It's produced by the lungs. And they also believe it's produced by the pineal gland, which is literally your third eye. The pineal gland in certain reptiles actually has a, rep a retina and a lens. I mean, it's like an eyeball. And they think, and the, the Egyptians called it the seed of the soul, and they think that this is one of the reasons why they have this obsession with this uh, gland in Eastern mysticism. Is somehow or another they figured out that this is the gland that produces this incredibly potent psychedelic drug. This psychedelic drug, dimethyltryptamine, also exists in thousands of different plants. The problem is when you consume it orally, your body produces something in your gut called monoamine oxidase. And monoamine oxidase breaks it down. So what these indigenous people figured out is how to combine one plant, which contains 
this psychedelic compound with another plant which contains a natural MAO inhibitor called harmine. So they brew this all together, much like they did to the cassava, which right, we have right. no, under, no idea how they figured that out. Right. They brew this stuff up together, and they create this psychedelic tea called ayahuasca. And ayahuasca, now they have all these trips where people go down to Peru and take this stuff and trip their fucking balls off. And this, uh, this, the combination of these things um, leads to this incredibly potent, tra really transformative experience, which is impossible to describe. And that this this uh, psychedelic drug. Why, why did I bring that up? What was well, we were talking about how maybe chimps and or these early ancestors did something similar, which pushed them along this path of starting to communicate. Right, but how with did each I get other. to DMT? What, what did I, how did I get to ayahuasca? There are a couple of links in that chain. Maybe it was because of animals that get high. That's that, that's what it was. So this is what this. Th that's exactly what it was. It was the yeah, the jaguar getting high on DMT. That's what they think the jaguar is doing. It's just the jaguar consuming this stuff, he's, it's making him trip on DMT. And right. DMT is, I mean, it's fun. It's a really exciting right. and experience. So, the, so Robert Trivers is this wonderful biologist who started a lot of the kinds of work that we're talking about going in the 70s, calls these sorts of things a phenotypic indulgence, right? Mm. So evolution gave you these pleasure centers in your brain so that you do what's in your genes' best interests and kill the animal or get the girl or whatever and that makes you feel good and so we tend to like the things that are good for us and dislike the things that are bad for us we don't want to eat feces we do want to eat a steak right. so there's cases like this where it short circuits that it goes right to the pleasure center even though what it's doing is kind of irrelevant but this is a case where maybe it wasn't irrelevant maybe it actually caused these animals to then change the way that they behave to become more sociable right it's very possible something like that played a role along the way which is why if you replay the sequence of the vanishing rainforest 10 times only one time does it maybe lead to anything good and the other nine times it leads to a bunch of dead chimps mm. yeah well the, the the process was probably incredibly slow right yeah. over millions of mm. years that the climate did alter